I wish to make a brief statement. On Friday, in connection with my speech following the Ukrainian president's speech, I pointed out the presence of an individual in the gallery. It was my intention to show that the conflict between Russia and Ukraine is nothing new and that Ukrainians have unfortunately been subject to foreign aggression for far too long now and it's time it stopped. Subsequently become aware of more information which causes me to regret my decision to recognize this individual. I wish to apologize to the House and I'm deeply sorry that I have offended many uh, in my, with my gestures and remarks. I would also like to add that this initiative was entirely my own. The individual in question being from my writing and having been brought to my attention, no one, including you, my fellow parliamentarians, or Ukraine, the Ukraine delegation, was privy to my remarks prior to their delivery. I'd like to thank members for their attention. The Honourable Minister is rising on a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for that apology. I have to say, though, uh, as a parliamentarian, as a Canadian of Jewish origin, as a descendant of Holocaust survivors whose majority of her family walked in to Auschwitz-Birkenau and only my grandfather and his brother walked out, that I think this hurt all of us in Parliament. And I'll say that personally, I feel particularly hurt by this. I would say that as parliamentarians, we place our trust in you. There are many times when we recognize people in the gallery and we do so on your good advice and your good offices. And all of us here did that in the chamber on Friday because we trusted you on that. I think this unfortunate situation has been deeply embarrassing for Canada's parliament. I think it's been deeply embarrassing for Canada and I think it was deeply embarrassing for the president of the Ukraine, who came here in friendship, who came here because we are a strong ally, and who came here because he trusted Canadians. I appreciate that this was your, that you're taking responsibility because this was your um, initiative, and you have confirmed that neither the government of Canada nor the Ukrainian delegation had any prior knowledge to this individual being invited to the House or that he would be recognized. However, given this deeply embarrassing situation, I think for all of us as parliamentarians on all sides, I think it is very important that we collectively work together to strike this recognition from the record. And I will work with my colleagues to do that to all those who have loved ones that were in the Holocaust, to Jewish Canadians, today being Yom Kippur, the holiest day in the Jewish calendar, a day of atonement, a day to prepare for the year ahead. We stand with you in this. We recognize this was a deeply hurtful moment. And many of us in this chamber feel that hurt acutely. I want to please ask all colleagues, particularly those in the Conservative Party of Canada, to make sure that we do not politicize this issue. I don't think it helps anybody. I think we need to make sure that we move forward, recognize this mistake, and stand in solidarity together to reiterate our commitment to Jewish Canadians but also to Ukrainian Canadians and the people who are fighting for freedom, for peace, and for justice in Ukraine right now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the honorable member for her comment.
and uh, the honorable member for New, Miss <coughs> New Westminster Burnaby, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's with great sadness that I take the floor today following the statement you just made and to deal with what happened in the House on Friday. Parliament entrusts the Speaker to guide this Parliament through challenging circumstances. And Mr. Speaker, you have done an admirable job doing just that through COVID-19, the occupation of downtown Ottawa last winter, and the putting in place of a hybrid parliament. The procedure et les usages de Chambre des communes indique the House of Commons procedures and practices indicate that the Speaker has various roles, including ceremonial and diplomatic, and our Speaker often acts as a representative of the House. His ceremonial role is important, and that is why he alone has the privilege of recognizing visitors in the gallery. This privileged role led to a situation on Friday in which an individual who, according to the Simon Wiesenthal Center, was a member of a Nazi unit responsible for the death of many Jews and was convicted uh, in the Nuremberg trials. This individual was a guest of this house and shocking that members of parliament rose to give him an ovation. Members did so because we took the speaker's word that this individual should indeed be granted this honour in good faith. We have members of parliament who have dedicated significant parts of their lives to fighting racism, fascism and anti-Semitism. We have members of parliament who lost family members to Nazism. Two members of my family, my uncle, my grandfather, whose names are commemorated on the Cenotaph in New Westminster, B.C., are part of the scars of this history. These same members of Parliament feel betrayed right now, as do members of the Jewish community and of other communities who are victims of the horrific violence of the Nazis. In many ways, the Speaker is the face of this House and represents our joint commitment to democratic institutions and principles. The Speaker has to be above reproach in that role. Although we appreciate the apology made by the Speaker yesterday and in his statement today, we regretfully and sadly say that that's not enough. Unforgivable error, which puts the entire House in disrepute. And unfortunately, I believe a sacred trust has been broken. It's for that reason, for the good of the institution of the House of Commons, that I say, sadly, I don't believe you can continue in this role. Regrettably, I must respectfully ask that you step aside. I ask for the good of Parliament that you step down from the role of Speaker. Merci au commentaire. Thank you for that comment. Mr. Speaker, this is a, a very grave incident on a day when the government of Canada was welcoming the head of state of Ukraine, a country that is undergoing an unjust and illegal invasion. There was a guest in the gallery who, whose presence fed into the Russian propaganda and narrative about the bogus justification for Putin's illegal invasion. State visits are organized by the government. Every aspect of President Zelensky's visit would have been highly managed by the PMO. There are obviously incredible security concerns when you have not just a head of state, not just a head of uh, a foreign dignitary, but someone whose people are fighting for their lives and their survival, someone who is targeted by Vladimir Putin's regime. Obviously, there are massive security implications. Your statement doesn't answer the questions around how this individual was vetted, how the government 
who would have seen all aspects, all guest lists, all interactions with President Zelensky allowed that person to be in the chamber. Members of Parliament don't have the ability to vet who might happen to be in the chamber on any given day. That's the responsibility of the Director of Protective Services, who reports to the Minister of Public Safety. And the coordination between the Prime Minister's office, the protocol office here in the House of Commons, and that protective service is what members trust is happening to make sure that things like that don't, don't happen. If someone of that background, which a straightforward Google search will show, served in that particular division during World War II, if that basic level of vetting was not done by the government, then that raises serious concerns. What kind of message does that send to our allies around the world that when they come to the House of Commons to address the House and Senate, that basic rudimentary vetting as to who might be in the galleries isn't done? That's incredible, Mr. Speaker. So we'll take your statement under advisement. We'll have more to say on this. But there are still many, many questions that need to be answered as to how the Prime Minister's office so completely dropped the ball on this. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I, I would just like to respond to my honourable colleague because I think we both share the frustration about what happened on Friday, but I do want to reiterate, and as you have made very clear in your statement, Mr. Speaker, that this was your initiative. The Government of Canada had no knowledge of this individual coming to... The Government had no knowledge. The Speaker is responsible for this chamber. He invited him of his own accord, and he made the decision himself to recognize him. Neither the Government of Canada nor the delegation of Ukraine had any knowledge of this. I would respectfully submit, Mr. Speaker, that you clarify this for the members opposite, because it's important that this information be clear and that these false allegations do not continue because they're not true. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We'll proceed to the Honourable Member for La Prairie and then come back to the Member for Regina Capel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Look, today, before I talk about the situation before us, I'd like to say that I have thoughts for people uh, who suffered in, the, in World War II. It was one of the darkest moments in history, particularly for the Jewish community who experienced full-on the aggression of a pitiless invader. Mr. Speaker, you know how much I've always found your work to be outstanding, and I've always taken the trouble of saying so. So I'm a bit emotional about this. You've always been a strength in our view. We've never doubted anything you proposed or anything you did. So much so that on Friday, when you suggested that we applaud an individual who, it turns out, was with the Nazis, we never would have thought that it was anything but a deserving uh, person, a person deserving of the House's ovation. And then subsequently, we learned that that was not so. This was someone with a very dark past, and that was a shock. It came as a shock to us because you were, in a way, responsible for that commendation. That said, you apologized, and I'm completely convinced that that was a sincere apology. And it's your conscience, your wisdom, and it, it's not for me to say whether those ex apologies were sufficient. I'd like to go beyond partisanship here. I think this situation calls on us to be better than that. Uh, this was a situation where the Ukrainian leader, uh, m who may feel affected by the situation, so when you think uh, 
in Quebec and in Canada. There are people that are standing in solidarity with Ukraine and the Ukrainian leader. Well, let's just say that that situation was not what we would have hoped for. The Ukrainian leader is a hero, and unfortunately, he is somehow tarnished by what happened on Friday. Thank you. I believe uh, the Honourable uh, Member for uh, Calgary Nose Hill. Speaker, um, as chair of the Canada-Slovakia Parliamentary Friendship Group, it's my obligation to point out that the individual in question who was recognized on Friday was part of a division that was used against the Slovak National Uprising, which was a military uprising organized by Slovak resistance movements during World War II, comprised of the anti-Nazi political faction of the Slovak nation, which is my heritage. Units of this division this man fought with were sent to help squash the Slovak rebellion. Battle groups were formed to actively search out and destroy members of the resistance. And according to Slovak historian Kay Fremal, the division's members were helping in anti-partisan, repressive and terrorist actions and committing, committed murders and other excesses. Based on what I've heard in the House today, I feel like this is the government trying to collectivize responsibility for an incident that was solely within their purview. By inviting the Ukrainian president to our country, we had a duty to protect him in all aspects. And by the government failing to have either a non-existent or non or judgment-free vetting process for members who would be vet, recognized and lauded in the House of Commons, the House of Commons should be not, not accepting collective responsibility for that abject, egregious, lack of judgment that has tarnished the reputation of our country and led to people like the ambassador from Poland demanding an apology from us. This is a time in which our country needs to be having, uh, our allies need to be standing with us. There should be no question about whether or not we have our act together. And yet here we are having this debate. It's a beyond an embarrassment. It is a stain on our country. And I refuse, as a member of this place who represents 120,000 Canadians, to collectively share responsibility with a government that has a pattern of not vetting questionable individuals that they take meetings with. Jaswell Atwell, Joshua Boyle. Enough. I'm not respect. I will not. I will not, on behalf of my constituents, take one ounce of blame for this government failing a vetting process. They can say, Mr. Speaker, it was your pure view. They invited this man. They invited this world global leader here. And they failed to vet this. So no, on behalf of the constituents of Calgary Nose Hill, I will not accept collective responsibility and the buck stops at the Prime Minister's office. Yeah. The Honourable Opposition House Leader, then the Government House Leader, before anything starts, I just want to make it clear that it was my decision in my decision alone. This was a constituent who wanted to see what wanted to be here, and I recognized him. It was my decision, and I apologize profusely. I cannot, I cannot tell you how regretful it is. And it may not be good enough for some of you, and for that I apologize. And I'll let the Honourable Opposition House Leader take it from here, and then we'll go to the Government House Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I just want to underscore the point that my colleague just raised. It's, it, this is a question about, is it, is it the government's position that when we have a foreign head of state that the government does zero security vetting for who will be in the same room as that head of state? Is that the message that we're sending? to our allies, that when they come here, no, you don't know who's going to be in the gallery. I mean, what kind of message does that send to Canada's partners and allies around the world? And that's the point that we're raising, Mr. Speaker. It's all well and good for you to come in and accept your share of the responsibility. But there's only one entity in this chamber that has the resources and the mandate to keep people safe. As my colleague just pointed out, when President Zelensky comes here on the invitation of the Prime Minister, when the entire itinerary is planned by the PMO, the Government of Canada has an obligation to him personally to secure his 
safety has a responsibility to the people of Ukraine to ensure the safety of their president. And he has a responsibility to all Canadians to uphold the dignity of Canada as a country, as a trusted partner and ally. And in all three of those areas, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister failed. Yes. Failed to do that basic level of responsibility. That's the point that we're underscoring, Mr. Speaker. There was a Nazi in the chamber. There's only one entity, one group that could have done anything about it, that could have flagged that. And as I mentioned, the director of the Parliamentary Protective Service reports up to the Government of Canada for operational matters. That is in the mandate of the Protective Services. The director of the Parliamentary Protective Service must be a member of the RCMP. That's in the enabling legislation. That was all done for a reason, Mr. Speaker. Yes. I was in the chair when that legislation was passed. And it was precisely because the House of Commons itself did not have the capability to do full security vettings and background checks on individuals. That was the reason why we did that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To make available to the House of Commons the resources of federal institutions like the RCMP and like CSIS. That is why we do not accept the attempt to collectivize blame for this. Opposition parties do not have access to CSIS reports. We do not have access to the RCMP's vast capabilities to do background checks and vetting. And in this case, it would have taken a simple Google search to find a blog post written by that individual saying that he served in an SS division, in a Nazi division during World War II. And again, all those resources are available to the government. The mandate, the responsibility lies with the government and the entire reporting structure of the parliamentary precinct services here flows up to the government. That's why we still have many, many questions and this issue does not end with your statement or your apology. The Honourable Government House Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Look, I, I have immense respect for my colleague opposite. In fact, he was the Speaker. He occupied that chair. And so he would know that as the Speaker, you do have prerogative to invite guests into the chamber. I will reiterate, neither the government nor the Ukrainian delegation had any prior knowledge. In fact, if colleagues, if colleagues, if colleagues will recall when the recognition was done, it was done by the speaker and we did it and we did it on the good offices of the Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Ask the honourable member to respect, this is a very difficult time for everyone in this chamber. And I understand that emotions are running loud and running high but I'm going to ask everyone to listen to each other. I don't think I've ever been through a tougher time in this chamber or in this house since I got here in 2004. So I would ask some respect for both sides so that if someone is speaking, please, please show some respect. The Honourable Government House Leader, please continue. Wow. Uh, I you know what, he's not even worth responding to. Please continue. Mr. Speaker, I would just reiterate yeah. for colleagues that if they recall when this moment happened, it happened during the Speaker's remarks. We were all caught off guard by this. I'm not trying to collectivize responsibility. I'm trying to lay the facts on the table, which my Conservative colleagues are choosing to ignore. I have asked them respectfully not to politicize this issue. In fact, it hurts, it hurts communities more than it helps them. And as someone who personally has been deeply hurt by this, as indeed I believe all members in this chamber have been, I think that we need to work together to strike this recognition from the tape from Hansard and to ensure that this never happens again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Debating. The Honourable Member for Grand Prairie Mackenzie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the same point of order. Mr. Speaker, I, 
under, I appreciate your desire to take full responsibility for this entire event. But, Mr. Speaker, those of us who asked for guests to be able to attend Friday's proceedings know that we were required to give notice of the individuals that we asked for permission. That was, went through a process. Emails were sent to those individuals. You, Mr. Speaker, were not standing at the door of this parliamentary precinct. There was massive security protocols. Individuals were required to be on extensive lists. That, Mr. Speaker, I don't believe that you individually vetted each of those names. Parliamentary Protective Services is responsible to the government. The lists were given to the government. One would assume that there would have been some process of vetting. If the government is now saying, Mr. Speaker, that none of that happened, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I know your desire to take this on, but I don't believe for a second that you went, verified each person who was invited to this place, verified that they were not a security risk, and then stood at the door and let them in. I know that wasn't the truth. So this attempt by the government to state that this was your doing and your doing alone, that you alone are responsible and that they have bear no responsibility, is to send a signal to all Canadians and all of our allies that we're not serious about anything. Well, I'm not going to take collective responsibility for what, in fact, is the government's responsibility. And, Mr. Speaker, I'd recommend you not do it either. The government House Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, unfortunately, I think my honourable colleague has misinterpreted what I was saying. What I was saying and what you yourself indeed have said is that you invited this particular individual you yourself decided to recognize this individual without informing either the government or the Ukrainian delegation that you would be doing this. When it comes to everyone that was invited to Parliament, of course that vetting happened. However, the decision, the decision to recognize an individual was that of the Speaker. And I would ask that the members opposite would please be respectful. This is a very difficult time for all of us, but I do ask them to stick to the facts and the issue at hand, which was the fact that this individual was invited by the Speaker and the decision to recognize by the Speaker, not by the government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Regina Capel or the Opposition House Leader. Mr. Speaker, we are getting completely mixed messages today. and. Uh, you know, today is the celebration of Yom Kippur, where our Jewish fellow citizens will be celebrating. Coming hot on the heels of this just atrocious international incident that the government allowed to happen, we need clarity. Just a few moments ago, the government house leader said that the government had no idea that this individual was invited. Now. The House Leader has just said that there was a vetting process. So I'd like some clarity right now. Did the Government of Canada receive a list with this individual's name on it? Yes or no? The Honourable Government House Leader. Speaker, I was referring to the fact that, of course, security measures are taken for invitations to Parliament. However, this individual was invited by the Speaker. The government had no knowledge that this individual was invited or that he would be recognized in Parliament. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for South Surrey, White Rocks. On the same point of order, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate uh, you taking responsibility for your part in this. It is something that is weighing very heavily ever since it happened on all of us here. And a lot of the public does not understand 
how this person or anyone with that history could possibly have been here and how all of us could not have known. And I think it has been explained that there is no ability on behalf of opposition members to know when someone is introduced from the gallery. We had no notice and we had no context for that. However, there is a concept in law about responsibility. And that concept is someone either knew or ought to have known. And this is where we have a disconnect in this, these discussions today. Because it isn't only up to the Speaker of the House who sits in the gallery. It is up to the responsibility of those charged with our national security and our overall security in this House. Those of us who lived through a terrorist attack back in 2014 know this all too well when someone charged into center block uh, with a weapon and we were all engaged in that terrible day. And because of that day, when we used to have just an unlocked door in front of Parliament, I think our naivete was shattered that day. And changes were made, as the House Leader has already gone through. And those changes squarely put the responsibility for the safety and security of all our members in this House in open galleries. There, there are countries that have bulletproof glass between the public galleries and their legislators. Not here. We still have a very open way of doing our business. But we put trust in those, in authority, in the Prime Minister, in the Prime Minister's office, in the Privy Council office, and in the Speaker's office, to ensure that we have our debates here, we have our discussions, free of worry about security issues, or when it comes to recognizing, we trust that the reason we're being asked to recognize is because that person has made significant contributions either to Canada or internationally, or they are noted and elected government officials sometimes from provinces or other countries. So we repose that trust in our authority positions. And it, in my view, Mr. Speaker, it is wrong and it is trying to escape responsibility for the government to say that they had nothing to do with it. If they didn't, they should have. Yes. And if they let it all happen and they are mere observers in the great uh, play of life, as they often say about so many things, we're just on the outside, we're observers. No, they are the government, they are the executive, they are the ones in charge. And they should have done their job and they didn't. Here, here. Mr. The Honourable uh, Parliamentary Secretary is rising on a point of order. Speaker, um, as a Polish Canadian, uh, I can say that for many Poles and Polish Canadians, the month of September is a difficult one. It's a month where many Poles and Polish Canadians commemorate the German Nazi invasion of Poland and the Soviet Russian invasion of Poland, September 17th. Six million Poles were murdered, were killed in the Second World War. One out of five citizens. The, the presence of the gentleman in the gallery was something that is deeply hurtful uh, to Polish Canadians, uh, to Poles. And his membership in the, uh, the first Ukrainian division or the Waffen SS Galician division. This is a particularly cruel, exceptionally cruel unit that murdered thousands of Jews, thousands of Poles in eastern Poland. Viciously, viciously murdering Poles and Jews. And so that moment in the house was something that is deeply painful to my community, uh, to Polish Canadians and Poles abroad. But Mr. Speaker, I know you as a good man. 
the delegations that come here internationally know you as a good man. You have taken ownership of this grievous error. You have promptly taken responsibility, full responsibility on your shoulders. And you apologized deeply. My interest here is that we work together as parliamentarians to make sure that we have the systems in place that this never happens again in this house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the honorable member for Windsor Tecumseh. If there's no other interventions, once again, I want to apologize for what happened and really tell you that the intention was not to embarrass this house. The intention was to show what history was about and how it continues and how things should stop. My sincere apologies to the House, to each and every one of you who are in the House today, and to all Canadians for having been put through this.